Have you ever pondered what it would be like if the prophecies of the prophets were to unfold in our contemporary world? Imagine a futuristic city filled with soaring skyscrapers and an abundance of cutting-edge technology. Amidst such, the echo of an ancient prophecy reverberates. Matthew 24, 30-31 whispers of the Son of Man appearing in the sky, arriving not as a harbinger of doom, but as a beacon of hope. As the prophecy unfolds, an individual image materializes. Picture the Messiah as a black man from Africa in a traditional African garment. Unexpectedly, the Messiah will return not where anticipated, but where needed most. As foretold, his arrival will not be in the areas we might mutt. From the hustle and bustle of a city that never sleeps, our journey takes us to a place where time seems to stand still. We leave behind the towering skyscrapers and flashing neon lights, trading them for the rustic charm of southern Arizona. The air here is different, clear and pure, untainted by the urban smog. The landscape, untouched, stands as a testament to the enduring beauty of nature, a stark contrast to the man-made marvels of the city. In the tranquility of this rural setting, one can almost hear the echoes of an ancient prophecy. This prophecy from Zechariah 14, verse 4, speaks of a day when the Messiah will stand on the Mount of Olives and his people will be gathered to him. It speaks of a day of unity, a day of return. Here, amidst the simplicity of nature, we find a gathering of souls ready for his arrival. And then, when least expected, he returns. The Messiah's return is not just an event, but a monumental occasion that has been etched in prophecy for centuries. He emerges, an African man of thin, muscular build, embodying the strength and resilience of his people. As we turn to the Bible, the scriptures paint a vivid picture of this grand return. It's in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 32, where we find the Messiah's arrival described as a glorious spectacle. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him. His return, however, is not without its dramatic moments. As the Apostle Peter warns in his second epistle, chapter 3, verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Yet, amidst the awe and the fear, there's a message of hope. The first letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 4, verses 16 to 17, assures us, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The return of the Messiah is a spectacle, a moment of reckoning, and a promise of redemption. As prophesied in Revelations chapter 1, verse 7, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all peoples on earth will mourn because of him. In his return, we find hope, redemption, and a promise of a new beginning. His return, as prophesied, brings about a new era for humanity. Imagine a world where love reigns supreme, where peace is not just a fleeting moment, but a permanent state of being. This is the promise of his return, a beacon of hope that shines bright in a world often clouded by uncertainty and strife. As foretold in the scriptures, from Zechariah to Matthew to Peter and Thessalonians, and finally to Revelations, his return signifies the regathering of his people. It's a message of redemption, a testament to the enduring power of faith. It's a tale of a futuristic city transitioning into a rural land, symbolizing a return to our spiritual roots. This narrative, rich in symbolism and steeped in prophecy, paints a picture of a world transformed by the Messiah's return. It's a story of hope, of redemption, and ultimately of love. As we look to the future, we must ask ourselves, are we ready for his return?